Which recruits can Florida State flip? You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith. Thank you to the everydayers that make this a great show. Truly appreciate you coming in each and every day. You can find this podcast wherever you find your pods for free and on YouTube. Today's show is going to talk about the opportunities for Florida State to recruit and flip a few kids that are currently committed to other schools. We're also going to break down defensive back recruiting as the Knowles are rolling there. They're in on some really good players and have a chance to come to fruition with a few of them here in the next couple months. And also a little bit of a look to the future, talking about Tadarius Hughes, a prospect that the Knowles have already got committed for the class of 2026. So today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Recruiting flips. This is the phrase that you will hear a lot in the recruiting industry. Basically, it means you're still recruiting a kid that is committed to another institution and you're not going to give up. Florida State is in on a bevy of prospects committed to other programs that have already visited Florida State, either unofficially, officially, or both. Today, I'm going to focus on mostly the kids that have officially visited and talk about scenarios and why I think Florida State has a chance. So let's dive in. Florida State's list, again, is longer than the one I'm going to go over here, but it's a pretty impressive group. And to be honest with you, I don't know how many they'll get, but I'd be surprised if it's not two or three of these guys. So take it for what it's worth. Tavion Wallace, obviously there was much angst from yours truly included when he committed to none other than Arkansas. No offense to the Hogs, but Florida State can't lose kids to Arkansas. If you want to see that rant, look it up from a few days back here on Locked on Seminoles. But he's a really good football player, linebacker out of Southeast Georgia, national recruit that UGA wanted, Florida State wanted, et cetera but he picks Arkansas. Sorry, I'm not buying that as a signed kind of delivered guy. Uh, my guy, T. Will, really good coach at Arkansas aside. He, he's a great guy. They're on the hot seat there. Prove me wrong. Arkansas was really close, really close from all things that I heard to firing their coach last year. How accurate that is, I don't know, because quite frankly, I don't even try to find out a whole lot of information about what's going on at Arkansas. They're a bottom five or so team in the SEC. It's just true. So why would I care? But at the same time, T. Will is the linebacker coach, D.C., et cetera, at Arkansas, and he is a phenomenal recruiter. Uh, There's no way around it, though. They're bad. So, again, I I know the relationship thing wins out more often than anything, and I talk about it constantly here on Locked on Seminoles, but I don't see that staff being together. And maybe – if, even if they do get can, maybe the next coach will keep T. Will. I don't know. But remember, signing day is being moved up. This will not benefit schools on the hot seat and going through a transition because there's a shorter window to sign early now. That is really bad for those schools. Florida is another example. You don't have time if you hire a guy like the end of November, let's say he's got five days get a staff together, have visits, talk to kids before signing. It's horrendous. This is going to apply to Arkansas as well. Obviously, Florida State can take advantage of this, not only Arkansas or Florida, but any school that fires their coach this year at the end, it's going to be bad news bears. Signing day, I believe, is the 4th of December. It's usually somewhere around the 15th or the 20th. doesn't sound like a big deal, but it is humongous in recruiting. These kids want to sign early. They want to enroll in January. So all the kids I'm talking about here – if some of them end up committed to schools that fire their coach, and there's going to be multiple, Florida State and all the other teams are going to come after them have an advantage. Our staff is secure. We know you. You know us. You visited, et cetera, et cetera. Come on down. So keep that in mind as well. Another kid, and this is one Florida State was the runner-up with, Tarvos T.J. Alford, another linebacker, but he committed a long time ago to Ohio State. I called one of my buddies a little bit ago that knows him pretty well. And to be really honest, I don't think this is a recruitment that's over. Uh, Miami, uh, Florida State, and numerous other programs, Florida, et cetera, are all going to recruit him. He's committed to the Ohio State Buckeyes, but he's just a kid that's looked around a lot. Now, 
I did check his timeline as well as talking to my friend. We both think Ohio State's in still in a pretty good spot, but Florida State's making them the most noise, and they need linebackers. Ohio State just got a really good player, Petty John, from the state of Texas, another big-time linebacker, much like Alford, and he seemed excited about it. I'm sure he wants to play with other good players. Don't get me wrong. It's still a long way from Vero Beach, Florida to Columbus, Ohio. It's not short drive to Tallahassee, but you can drive it. Driving to Columbus is not a good time from the Space Coast. That's terrible. So with that being stated, I think Florida State's got a chance with this. It may drag out all the way into the fall and close to signing day, but I don't think either coaching staff's going anywhere. This is going to be more of a gut feel for Alford. Just my opinion. All the signs are that Florida State's not going to give up, though, and they've got a really good defense, and they're the local school, if you will. So we'll see what happens, but Florida State's going to be in contention for Alford all the way through to signing day until otherwise proven, as far as I'm concerned. This is an interesting one, and it's based off kind of what's happened the last few years, and uh, I'm a believe-it-when-I-see-it guy. Shamar Arnaud, he plays at Carrollton, same high school as Julian Lewis, for those of you that are recruiting nuts. Up there in Georgia, he committed to Southern Cal. Florida State hosted him, but Southern Cal's already lost at least three kids in the South that they've had committed. Julian Lewis, ironically, could be the fourth. It's his teammate. He might, he might end up at Auburn. I just don't think many of the kids down South are going to feel comfortable at the end of the day to sign with a school in Los Angeles, California. They've already lost three of them. I, I just, I, I will be shocked. Now the next part is how many of these kids are they really going after? Because like SC needs DBs. They need DBs. They're going into the Big Ten. They're playing a more difficult schedule now. Uh, they still play Notre Dame, et cetera. They, they really need defensive players in, in corners. He's a long kid, 6'1", 6'2". We'll see. But he also fits what Patrick Satan wants to do in terms of the length. A lot of man coverage, uh, cover four, which is basically soft man coverage, different things like that that they can run. And they've got a Pretty, pretty wide range of stuff they're going to do. So length at corner and even safety, he could probably play that too. Arno's just a good athlete. I think that this is a kid they're going to continue to at least communicate with, and I'm sure a bunch of other schools in the South will. Just keep him on the back burner because we're going to talk about some DBs here in a minute with Florida State. They're not in a bad spot at all there, but he's a kid that could certainly flip. Nicholas Clayton, this is a unique one. I, I think Florida State probably regrets how they, they did this, but just hear me out. He attends Buholtz in the city of Gainesville. UF, for whatever reason, of course, they screw up a lot of things with recruiting. I don't think they really went after him. He's a pure edge rusher. I think he's way better than what his ranking is. He just lives in Gainesville where not a lot of guys get scouted as much as they should. He's committed to Wisconsin. Now, Florida State, they probably thought they were going to get a few of the other kids or had a better shot, et cetera. DN recruiting hasn't come together quite like D-tackle recruiting is, which – the tackle recruiting might be done. They've got two kids in the boat. But don't be surprised if the Knowles come back around on him. He's a good player. We're going to get a chance to see him again this fall. And it's the same deal as with Alford. He's going to like Madison, Wisconsin is almost in Canada for crying out loud. So it's a long way for a Florida kid. You're going to push, hey, we're closer to home, better weather, better program. This is an open book. Can they get him to come back for a visit, et cetera? I don't know how that ended, but. It was kind of goofy because he was going to visit that didn't. We'll see. But Clayton's a natural pass rusher. He kind of reminds me in terms of his frame and where he's at, similar to Patrick Payton at this same stage. I'm not saying he's going to develop like that, but that's the kind of frame we're talking about. Maybe the most important guy on my list today is the following player. Jabari Antoine, Westgate High School in the greater Lafayette, Louisiana area. I've talked about him before on this show multiple times, in fact. Very athletic kid. Corners that are six foot and above that can move like him do not grow on trees. It's going to be a little more advanced than some of the other kids I talk about today. In my opinion, he can play pretty physical. He can play receiver. He could probably play running back, whatever, be a free safety. But he was a priority recruit for LSU. We all know how LSU traditionally recruits not only their own state, but corner in general. He was a priority kid for them. If that doesn't tell you much, I, I don't know what to, what to say, but LSU rarely has bad DB classes. This was their guy in state. He decommitted. Miami and Florida State have had him on campus. Depending on who you talk to, it's one or the other. 
I've heard more scuttlebutt for him ending up at Miami. I don't know if that's true. I don't know the kid personally, but I know one of the guys that does know him and they, they think that he could go anywhere. So we'll see. But this is a kid that could play early, even a Florida State step chart, which obviously they're loaded in the secondary. He's really good. Plus, if you get him, he doesn't play against you at Miami. And that that might be Miami's biggest problem right now is corner, which is bizarre for them. But Miami's not exactly deep at corner. Uh, they definitely need a big-time defensive back class. So if you get him, you also keep him away from Miami. I'm sure Florida State is well aware of that. So doesn't look like he's going to go to LSU. They have a lot of problems on their defense right now. I have not heard good things. Continuing on from last year, which is just unfathomable at LSU. It's, it's hilarious, though. So if you can't keep kids at home that are an hour from your campus that you coveted, you're in trouble at LSU. So – Remember that name from Westgate High School, Jabari Antoine. He is really good. I, that might be another one that drags out for quite a while, whether he flips his commitment or not. If he commits to Florida State, Miami is not going to stop recruiting him and vice versa. So keep that in mind. But really, really good football player. Coming up next, we're going to talk about a few more flips. And then we're going to talk some DB recruiting because Florida State is uh, looking like they're going to hone in on some guys. That's next here on Locked on Sipples. If you're like me, you, you kind of look ahead to some of the big games for each football season. A few minutes before the show started, I was playing around on game time, checking out what the prices were for Florida State when they host the Florida Gators at the end of the season. And I was surprised how many tickets are still available. I, I figured it wouldn't be as easy to get tickets as there is. You can still get tickets on either side or in the end zone, luxury suites, etc. And I was curious, and I've done this before, if you go on the game time app after you download it, just type in Florida State football, get the whole list. You can click on a seat, and it'll show you immediately what your view is from that seat. It's really cool, man. Um, the all-in pricing is cool, but being able to go around and look at Dope Campbell Stadium by actually touching the screen, just boom, took about 10 seconds to find the Florida game, about another five seconds to find the seat I wanted to look at, and you could check it out. So make sure you check out game time. You have a lot of opportunities there. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for 20 bucks off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on college for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's continue on with a few more kids that I think that Florida State is going to at least try to flip. Things can change, but here we are with the next guy. This one is interesting. I, I think that two or three of these guys from the Florida class overall, and I'll talk about a few more, but even though he said, even though he said that he's shutting it down, I'm not buying that Jalen Wiggins is done with his recruitment. Do you really think that Norvell or anybody on that staff is going to completely give up on Jalen Wiggins, who might be the best player in the greater Tallahassee area this year. And he's a D lineman. You could always use those. That's kind of self-explanatory, especially since he's committed to Florida. I don't. He recently did say that, though. Now, prove me wrong on the following. UF's going to win enough games to keep their staff there. I don't see that. So you're going to tell me the relationship he's built. And Florida did a good job of recruiting Wiggins, by the way. They, they really did. But if he gets fired, again, it comes back to that point I brought up a little bit ago. These staffs that get fired, the next staff that comes in, is really in a horrible spot. This is going to be forever. Like, if they keep this early December signing day, it is going to destroy recruiting classes for teams that fire a coach or a guy just retires. Because these kids, they don't have enough time as it is to build a relationship with somebody. And even if you fire a coach like mid season, which could quite honestly happen with Billy Napier, that's not enough time to a hire that next coach and B for him to have his staff in place. It's not realistic with all the stuff with the statutes. You have to wait so many weeks do background checks, all this. You're not going to have your assistant staff. You're done. I think a bunch of teams are going to start to see that this year. That's going to be a complaint among schools because December 4th is a huge difference between that and like the 15th to the 20th, you just don't have any time to have any visits. So it, it's going to be rough. The other thing with this, again, he's just in the backyard. It's not a huge deal to go to Gainesville from Florida State. It's two and a half hours or whatever, but it's still right down the street. It's just something else to think about. 
Wiggins is a kid I expect Florida State to go after forever. Now, here's the scuttlebutt. This is a little projection on my part for the next couple of kids, and these things change constantly. Ben Hanks Jr. is leaning to Florida. No shock if you don't remember the name or don't know the name. His father was a linebacker for the Gators in the mid-90s, and he was dude. He was really good. He's expected to commit to Florida at some point, allegedly. But again, it's the whole situation with the staff. Plays at Booker T down in Miami, really good player. Florida State and about 20 other schools would be happy to have him, probably. But this is a corner of safety. I don't even think it matters where he would play, He's especially under Satan. They'd figure it out. But right now, it sounds like Florida. The same things I said with Wiggins kind of apply here. Even though he's a legacy for UF, is he going to be happy to go there if they switch coaching staffs? If they surprise everybody, and this, again, it'll go for the next kid as well, and they win this year, they go eight and four. Let's just throw that out there. Even if they lose to Florida State, whatever. I think they will keep most of their kids because Florida's a pretty easy sell. But I see them losing a bunch of recruits otherwise. The other kid right now, and it, again, this goes back and forth. Most people are projecting Bernal Brown to end up at Florida now. I haven't spoken to him in the last few weeks, so I don't have any intel. I literally don't. Uh, great kid. But the last I'd heard was Florida State. That has apparently changed because the visit to UF was his best visit. That's what I was told. And that's, you know, it is what it is. And his dad is a, a legacy there too. So there's that part. I know from talking to him, like the situation with the coaching staff is something not, that's on his mind and everybody else's. They want to see him win. This is the same thing over and over. But Florida State has done a really good job with Vernell as well. It's just ironic because Florida State is obviously Florida's biggest rival. It's always been that way, though. Florida and Florida State have battled for kids for as long as I can remember me following recruiting. So this is not a news flash. Also, Joshua Moore, he committed to Florida, and he's a big-bodied receiver. And I know that the, that the Knowles have a, you know, they got Wiley. But Joshua Moore is really good. If you got Wiley and Moore, and I'm not saying it's going to be the same level, but you had Johnny Wilson, you had Keon Coleman, had two big receivers. That worked out pretty good for the Knowles. I think they would take him. He's a South Florida kid out of West Broward High, 6'3", 205. I guarantee you Florida State would still recruit him. Later in the year, if they fill out and get a couple more receiver commits, he's just good. You would at least stay in contact with him. Do not be shocked if Florida State is in on him all the way through to National Signing Day. Finally, this is kind of a weird deal. I don't I don't know. I, out of all the kids that I followed this year in the South, conservatively, this has got to be one of the top five most difficult for me to figure out. Zion Grady out of Enterprise, Alabama. Florida State, they, they thought they had a really good shot at him. From everything I was told at the Intel, then he committed to Ohio State. A South Alabama kid committing to Ohio State is about as random as it gets. Literally, in my lifetime, I don't think they've even had one kid from South Alabama come close to committing to Ohio State. That is, it's a rural area where he's from, etc. Fits in better culturally, I would think, at Florida State. But maybe he just wanted to get away from home. Miami, Florida State, Georgia, Auburn, numerous other schools wanted him. But again, Zion committed to the Buckeyes. I highly doubt, again, because he's an edge rusher slash outside linebacker, that a bunch of schools are going to say, ah, we don't care. We're just letting him go to Ohio State. This is a kid Florida State's going to continue to recruit, and they didn't get Clayton. So they need at least one pure edge rusher like this in every class, maybe a guy that's versatile too. Both of them could probably play outside linebacker. And maybe it's two or three other guys. There's plenty of time, but just remember the name Zion Grady. He's really good. Coming up next on Locked on Seminoles, going to talk about a 2026 kid that's committed to the Knowles. I brought him up before he committed a few days back. And we're also going to talk about DB recruiting. A few of the kids that Florida State's got a really good chance to land and kind of finish out another good DB class for the Knowles. They just want to keep it rolling. That's next on Locked on Seminoles. Tadarius Hughes is from South Dade High School in Homestead, Florida. He's a free safety. He's very athletic, and he could also play receiver. He committed to Florida State late last week. I did a little short on him, but I, I want to break him down a little more now. This is a kid that has the ability to play numerous spots, and to be honest, I'm not going to go super in-depth on him. I need to see him live, for one, and just based on his frame, the way he runs and everything, there are so many guys that you can compare him to athletically that come from South Florida, just 
in particular or the Sunshine State overall, it's like, let's, let's see what he does early this year. I want to see his first three or four games, see if he puts up some huddle film. Maybe I'll see him play live, whatever. But here are the things that I know right now. Can't teach the young man's length. Very long, kid. That never goes out of style. Two, he breaks on the football with more than his feet. He uses this, his head. He's smart. He reads things. And like some of his picks and plays that he makes a break on the ball, he's like, okay, the ball needs to get here. Like he's way ahead. He's a very intelligent player. Finally, he catches the football away from the body. There are plays where his high school, South Dade down at Homestead, they use him as a receiver and he catches it naturally. He transfers that when he's playing free safety. He could play corner. I'm completely convinced of that. And he's also, if he comes to Florida State like he's projected to because he's committed, you got Sertan coaching him. I think we're pretty good there. He's as good a DB, DB coach as there is in college football. Florida State has a gym. And here's the, the final bonus with him for now. I'm just kind of giving an overview. Because he's so gifted, whatever kids they get in the 26 class, he can adjust. If you miss a corner, maybe out of your top five guys, you only sign one. Maybe you need to move him to corner. Cool. He can do it. If you don't sign another safety, cool. He's played free safety. He'll walk in, have a better chance to play, but he's a really talented guy. We're good. Right now, he's only ranked by like one of the services in the 26 class, and that's just getting started. I will be shocked if he's not a top 200 recruit conservatively by all four of the major services, ESPN, Rivals, On3, and 24-7 Sports, when all is said and done, and he signs his letter of intent with the Florida State Seminoles. He's too athletic, plays in a very talented area. You're going to see plenty of film of him against athletic guys, so it's easier to rank him high. Finally, to wrap up today's show, here are three guys that I like at DB. These are some of the guys that could could announce for the Knowles between now and in the end of the summer, it's possible, of course, we're talking about high school kids. The dates change. Number one, Max Redmond, DB out of Cardinal Newman in South Florida, the Palm Beach area. I watched his film, and I think the only reason that he's not ranked higher, he's just not a, like a super big kid. He's six foot, give or take. But he, again, kind of like Hughes, just breaks on the ball really well and anticipates. Never goes out of style. If you get to the football, that's what matters. You got to catch it. Natural hands, too. Just like with use, they're getting guys that how, – how often do you see this? DB's got an easy pick six, and he drops it. You start screaming at the at the television set or screaming at the – this kid catches the ball, and so does use. That, that's very important. And then finally, he's a pretty good tackler. He's got some thump to it. I'm surprised Redmond doesn't have more teams after him, but here's another good sign. Illinois, over the last few years, had some really good defenses in the secondary. Had the kid that went in the top five in the draft a few years ago. Illinois wants it. That's a good sign. He is under-recruited, but I don't think Florida State cares because they have done their own evaluations and amen to that for quite a while under this entire staff, really, on both sides of the ball, and I love that. I think he's good, and Florida State would do well to get him. Next up, this is the kid that I'm not sure what his timeline is, but all the scuttlebutt is Ole Miss or Florida State, and he plays at Escambia, the old high school that Emmett Smith attended. I went and took a deep dive into his film as well. Free safety receiver kid that can do a lot of different things. Natural hands, could play either spot. He's over six foot. He's got real long arms. Kind of reminds me of a, a kid that plays basketball and you throw alley-oops to. Just the way his frame is, he's springy. Got really good ability to get off the ground and go up and high point the football. And finally, he's got some physicality to him as well. There was a play on his highlights where he came from the opposite hash. Quarterback just flushed him, got flushed right. And he beat some of his own teammates at a shorter distance to hit the guy and knock him out of bounds. That never goes out of style. So big fan of Clarity. Uh, Clarity, he's, he's really, really athletic and long. That's 100% a Florida State special. They, they are loaded with bigger DBs. He fits the profile to AT. But we're going to see where his recruitment goes. Uh, Florida State's towards the top. Obviously, Escambia High School is only a little over two hours from Tallahassee, so they have the edge there over Ole Miss. But those are the two teams most often talked about. Finally, Tony Williams. I am really surprised Tony's not ranked a little higher because he can play corner, and the film is there, and he's kind of like Cardi. He's over six foot. He plays a lot of bump corner over six foot. He's committed to UCF, and that, that's cool, but I don't really know why he's not talked about higher in the rankings. He's pretty darn good. I wouldn't have a problem with him playing safety or corner. 
but it is what it is. I, I probably should have put him in the committed list, but like I, I really think he's going to Florida State. I don't really consider him committed to UCF. One of his last posts actually is about Florida State. Not a good sign for UCF. So Tony Williams out of Palm Beach Central down in South Florida, very athletic and long kid again. It's the same thing. Like length is what Florida State wants. And that's kind of the talking point across college football. But they're going to get at least one, if not two, of these kids conservatively. And they can be picky now because they're doing so well with recruiting. I'm not sure who plays where, but that's what Patrick Sertain's for. Again, if you're going to trust a DB coach, that's a pretty good one. So anyway, please like and subscribe to this video. I would appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that notification bell and comment on YouTube. Um, I, I'd really like to hear what you have to say. If there's anything that's going on with Florida State College football or otherwise, let's talk about it here on Locked on Seminoles. Otherwise, y'all have a great night. Thank you very much.